Our Father, we thank you for leading us thus far. We thank you for all we have heard, all we have seen, all that the Spirit has impressed and applied upon our hearts. We thank you for the periods of repentance. We thank you for extreme our hearts and lives and ministries to show us how far we've gone astray. As we leave this place today, we pray, O oh Lord, that we'll ever remain conscious of all that you have done in our hearts this period of time. And we pray, O oh Lord, we'll be sensitive to the voice of the Spirit of God. So that from now on, every step we take will be according to the clear teaching of your word. Amen. Once again, Lord, we're praying that you'll give us as individuals, as families, as local churches, and as a whole church together, a kind of decision that all that we have repented of will not go back into them in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go today, cure us completely. Amen. So that in the places where we go, the gospel and the gospel alone will be preached without fear, without favor. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 8, from verse 11. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word of joy. And these have no root which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away and that which fell among thongs are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit patience. Today we are looking at our third Bible study and we're looking at the word on the kill for backsliding. All through this leadership congress, the Lord has been calling the church as he called Israel back to the fold, back to the center of his revealed will. And all through these days, the Lord has been watching for genuine signs of repentance, just like he watched Israel. After he sent Hosea to them, he was watching for signs of genuine repentance and it will be wonderful if 
we have really sought the Lord and we're still seeking the Lord by confession, prayer, and fasting until he comes to rain righteousness upon us. We have talked so much about the backsliding of the individual, the backsliding of the local church, the backsliding and the deviation from the center of the teaching of the word of God, the deviation of the whole church. What then are we to do so that the church can be fully cured of its backsliding? Evil men who crept into the church unawares to subvert this, the household of faith must be silenced. Here you are today that you are going back to your local churches. And we have appointed overseers over the regions. You will find out when you get there, and you should get in contact with me. There are some evil people, unsaved people, unsteady people, untaught people, people that are not converted. And people that are not standing on the word of God that you will find when you get to the region where we have placed you. That they are ministering, they are officiating in the choir, in search the scripture, in prayer warriors team, in evangelism, in house fellowship. You will find that they have been brought into position not because they have the spirit without measure, but because they have money without measure. And when you go back, if we are actually going to bring this church back, not just to call the Lord in one week, while well, we have been here, saying, Lord, we repent, Lord, we repent. If that repentance is genuine, you are going to have to silence all those people and tell them to go and seek the face of the Lord. In Titus chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, specifically they of the circumcision, those who are religious but not righteous. Jewish, but not justified. Those who appear to be active, but they are not real new creatures. Verse 11, whose mouths must be stopped. Except these people that have strayed into the team and a company of workers and ministers, and they do not have the lifestyle of ministers of the gospel. They do not have the convictions and the consecrations of those who know the Lord. And who can lead other people to know the Lord. Except they are stopped. The church will go back again. And so, if the repentance is genuine... And, there is, and the reconciliation with God and restoration is going to last. All these people that have crept in on our into the church and into the ministry of the church, they must be stopped. Not only that, strange women who have forsaken the guide of their youth and they have forgotten the covenant of God who have been leading ministers and members from the path of life must be discerned and severed. If you are going to actually bring the church where you are going now, you are going to bring them back to the path of record and to the life of the New Testament discipleship. 
if the church is going to be restored and remain permanently restored, there are women you will find out in the locations where you are going now. They have undue influence. And these are prayerless women. These are women that are not basing their lives and their convictions on the word of God. These are women that do not know God. They knew God in the past, but now they have gone away from the Lord. And by their voice, by their whatever they do, they wield a lot of influence on pastors, on ministers. And we are sending you there where you are going now. When you get there, do not allow these Jezebels to influence you. You are going there, there should be fire in your heart, fire in your voice, fire in your eyes, fire and flame all around you everywhere you go. And all these familiar spirit ladies that are singing in the choir, root them out. And all these people that, you know, come to the house fellowship with their chest, you know, exposed and leading innocent people into immorality, root them out. Every plant that my father has not planted must be uprooted. And all these girls that have been causing people to fall there, fall there, and they say that, you know, the house fellowship leaders, they are singing in the choir, they are among the prayer warriors, they are seeing vision, they are seeing revelation. Root them out and let them go back to the altar and seek the face of the Lord and get saved. If you don't do that, all your labor will be wasted. You'll be building on the one hand, these familiar spirit ladies and girls will destroy everything that you are trying to do. Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2, from verse 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. These are people, while you are preaching, they will be looking at you. When you finish preaching, they run to the toilet. Then when you close the meeting, they come to say, Ah, pastor. You are the new pastor here, the new overseer here. The old overseer was very bad, did not like us, was not taking care of us. You are the angel that has come now to deliver us. I will be flattering you and spreading the net in your, before your feet. And then we'll say, because you have just come, can I go to the market for you and buy something for you? She wants to become your second wife before your first wife from the other place who are before, packs now and comes. And they as I buy the thing for you, can I cook it for you? You are in the net already to deliver you from the strange woman. Even from the stranger which flattereth with her words, which forsakes the guide of her youth. That is when they were young. They were guided, they were taught, they were led, and they prayed, and they had convictions in those early years of the faith. But now they are forsaking the teaching and the doctrine, and they are forsaking the guide of their youth, and have forgotten the covenant of her God. Her house inclineth unto death, and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again. Neither take the hold of the paths of life. But you, as you go back today, make sure that you walk in the way of good men. Keep the paths of the righteous. If this church is going to remain, and we are going to continue showing forth the light of the gospel, the thorns of cares and riches and pleasures of life that choke the word of truth in our churches must be gathered up and burnt. Now listen. 
Whenever you come to a meeting like this, Congress like this, you should learn from what is said and also learn from what is not said. Some people are not sharp enough. They only learn what you say. But they do not learn what you do not say. And if you are going to be a real teacher of the word, if you are going to be a person that really knows the Lord, loves the Lord, bring the church to the place where the whole church you can love the Lord, you have to learn what is said and what is not said. You will notice very clearly in all my own messages here that I obviously, very clearly, very plainly, I've been very silent in my illustrations about IFL. If you notice, I don't mention IFL. They've ruined our church. They've wielded much influence more than they should have wielded. We brought in IFL just to, you know, give the gospel to them. They have been lost. And rich people are greater sinners in this country. Rich people are greater sinners than poor people in this country. Talk about drugs, addiction. Talk about adultery and immorality. Talk about corruption and bribery. Talk about smuggling. Talk about stealing. The rich people are more guilty. And because we saw that we needed to reach out to them the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth will not perish but have everlasting life. We began to extend the hand of the preaching, the proclamation of the gospel so that they can hear the word of repentance. And a few of them started coming in. But they have become thorn in our flesh. Talk about restitution. They have greater restitution to make than the poor people. But they argue. Talk about worldliness. They have more problem on worldliness than the poor people. But they are never going to do it. A lot of things that have come into the... And they have money power is cruel power. And they have such kind of cruel power on the pastors that love money more than the Bible. And so, the cares of life and the sons of riches and the pleasures of the world that have come into the church through the people we are trying to help. We are trying to help them to come into the fold, to come into the gospel, to know the Lord instead of knowing. A rich man doesn't, doesn't have time to read Bible. A highly placed person in, a, in an administrative chair, ivory tower, doesn't have time to know doctrine. A person who doesn't have time to pray, time to read Bible, in some places, they are the people that are placed to be controlling the poor people that know Bible from cover to cover. How can the ignorant come, uh, be, you know, overruling and controlling the people that are intelligent and knowledgeable in the word of God? And you'll find that they'll say this one should be teaching this, that one should be in charge of that, in charge of what? The house of God. Where there are many wives, one has gone, the other one is here now. And they are put in charge of this and that. As you go back to the various places we have sent you now, don't allow anybody to, uh, you know, fling Naira in front of you. They fling it, take your box of matches and burn it up. And look at Christ, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And you have not yet striven, striving against sin, right to your own blood. And here is, we have to take our stand. That if there are sons of cares, of riches, of the pleasures of this life, 
that choke the words of truth in our churches. We gather those cares of life and riches and pleasures, burn them up. Let's move on. Because we have a place we're going. If Abraham had been mindful of the country that he came out from, he would have had an occasion to go back. But he declared that he was a stranger and a pilgrim in this world. And they that speak thus, they declare they have a better country. Whose foundation is not made by man, but the foundation is made by God. We have a place we are going. We are people of destiny. We have a place. And it's in front of us. Don't allow any distraction. Whether from women. From rich people. From educated people. Professors. University people. From this and that. Now if the prodigal son is to rediscover. The love and the embrace of the father. He must arise. And return home in true repentance and humility. And if we as a church, if we want to come back into the embrace and the love of the Father, we must arise, return home, and kneel before our Father and say, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We're no more worthy to be called ministers, preachers, pastors, or thy sons. Make me as one of thy hired servants. When the Lord sees the genuine repentance within us, it's then he will say, remove the dirty, torn clothes, and put upon him a new garment of righteousness. And let us be merry, because this, my preacher boy, was lost, now is found. This, my preacher boy, was dead, now is alive. And if we're going to find restoration, reconciliation, and we're going to have real fellowship with the Lord, and this church is going to remain, in all the experiences that God has given us during this week, we must arise, return, and make a consecration to fully remain with the Lord. If the backsliding king, like Ahab, who had been sold, who had sold himself to walk evil in the sight of God, greatly stirred up by his wife, is to escape the judgment of God. He must Humble himself and walk softly before the Lord. Now, here is a major point. I mentioned it before, but it's still necessary. This Congress is to readjust what has gone wrong. And I said before that the wives have had great influence on, their past, on the pastors, their husbands, and on the overseers, their husbands. If this church is going to remain on fire, and it's going to remain in the light of the gospel, there's something we'll have to do. You who are wise, who have been influencing your husbands negatively, you have to come back, repent, and follow the way of the Lord. Now look up at me here. I am a pastor, a teacher, and God raised me up to bring the light and the truth of the gospel to this deeper life in particular. And a lot of you that are uh, wives of overseers, I was telling one yesterday, I said, uh, you know, she said this, this, and this, which I don't want to repeat. Because I said, those who are not here, among the former state overseers, that it's because of backsliding. And that they are not here because something is wrong, they have to correct. 
this fellow came to me and said, when you said that, I was, you know, I was battered and this and that, and I couldn't gain anything in what was being said except yesterday morning. I looked at her straight and said, you of all people, you are a little girl over here before you got married. I taught you everything you knew. I said, before you came to this Congress, look at me, you are backsliding. Maybe she expected me to be apologizing to her that I said what I said. I'm a preacher. And when I stand over here and I declare something, I stand as a representative of God. And you can't, when I, when I stand here and I open the Bible to you, whoever you are, man, woman, wife, husband, pastor, preacher, anyone, when I stand here and I declare, thus says the Lord unto you, as a prophet of God, and you say, I have something against, you have something against your father? Against the one that showed you the way to eternal life, the narrow way that leads to heaven. Who are you? And I repeat it again. Wife of overseers and pastors, you have had untold influence bad influence on your husband and you have to come back and you have a pastor here GS here that is not afraid of a woman I'm, I'm a person that I love the Bible, I know the Bible I preach the Bible and when you hear the word of God and we are bringing you back to where we were before all that you need to do is to go back and, and be praying if you have anything against me, that thing you have against me, and you go to talk any negative thing, you touch the anointed of the Lord, you'll go to hell. We're bringing the church back. And you, former state overseers' wives, I heard that you went to my wife asking, you all wanted to see me, and you know she's been telling me, these people said they want to see me. Uh, now, I didn't, uh, you know, tell her that I wouldn't see you, but in my Bible, I don't see community repentance. What I see is individual repentance. If you have anything you want to correct, if you know you have gone astray, it is not community repentance. Talking to one another, coming as a group, a eh, eh, pastor, we are sorry for this. If you are going to repent and make restitution, do it individually. Or you still having a meeting somewhere, meeting of special class of women. We all want to seek permission and see the general superintendent. What do you want to see me for? If you know that you've gone astray, if you have discovered backsliding and sin in your life, you come as an individual. Say, my father in the Lord, I see my life. I see the influence I've had on my husband. I see the evil I've done. I see that uh, when I was in Lagos here, you taught me line upon line, precept upon precept. I see that I've deviated, but this uh, Congress I have prayed. And as I've prayed, I've come back to the Lord, and in whichever way I've had any wrong influence on my husband on the stage, where we were before, I am sorry, now I will do no more evil. That's repentance. For the kind of thing you have in meeting behind. And let's go and see pastor. Which kind of pastor? You think I'm sugar daddy? I know what I'm doing. And I'm dead serious about this Congress where we are. I'm telling you that this church has gone astray and gone very far. There's no politics here. All that I preach now, there's no church politics. This is the word of God. And so those people who have been wanting to see me in groups, let go and see, oh, that's a joke, that is joke. You think anybody takes that serious? I don't take that serious. Repentance is an individual thing. You know when God called Abraham, he said, I called him alone. And if you are going to repent, you repent alone. If you want, you look, when these people, they, they all went, Peter said, I go a fishing. And all the other people said, if you go a fishing, let's, let's go with you. And then Jesus came to them, children, have you any meat? No. Throw your net there. Then they caught. And John said, it's the Lord. And they all came to the shore. And he said, come and dine. And after they ate, 
He didn't take the whole group. Peter, lovest thou me more than all these? That's personal. That's individual. And if you are going to repent, make it personal. How do we repent? On the conference, at the missions, the hostel, talking together. That's not repentance. How do we repent? Standing in front of the chapel there and gathering one another. Let's go and see pastor. Let's go and see pastor. So we can tell him that uh, we are wrong. So that all this is they are preaching. They will not think that, you know, we don't care. That's repentance. You repent on your knees with tears, with agony. Didn't you hear all the messages yesterday? From the great tribulation to the great white throne judgment. And then the eternal stage about heaven, hell, new earth, new heaven. When you hear that, it cannot be community repentance. It has to be individual, personal repentance. That's how to get to heaven. Look, all of us, many of us who are here, we left our fathers and mothers behind and we went ahead and repented individually. We didn't get all our senior brothers, senior sisters, everybody together. Let's go to Jesus. Let's go and repent before God. That's no repentance. If you are going to repent, you repent as individuals. But if you find that as I'm talking now, you know, when I speak, I, I'm definite. I, I don't beat about the bush. When I talk, I make you to understand what I'm talking about. And if I speak so straightforward like this, and you get offended, if you fight the word of God, and you fight me. You bite the finger that fed you. I have fed everybody. Have I not fed you? Who is here? But when you get to heaven, you will accept that God used somebody. And here is a person standing before you to make you know about salvation and about righteous living and about sanctification. And about power, baptism in the Holy Ghost. Now, some of you, I've taught you publicly, and I've taught you privately from house to house. And I'm pure from the blood of all of you. You know, I don't look for favor. I don't look for well done. I don't look for anything. All that I'm looking for is that on that day when we get over there, if you don't make it, you look at me and say, you told me the truth. It's my fault. And if you are going to be a person that will make the church go, come back to where we were before, you cannot be, you know, uh, favoring people and, you know, you cannot talk your mind. You cannot talk the word of God. You will talk the word of God. And, you know, you can talk the word of God and some. Permanent backsliders will go against what you are saying and post you and all that. Never mind. Did you hear the message last night on suffering, endurance, and evangelization? And I've never, I've never felt, uh, you know, I should compromise because of people who will abuse me or those who will not accept the message or those who will be avoiding me or something like that. No, that's part of the suffering. And if I finish here, and you throw stones at me, we've read about Paul last night. So there's no problem. And if we die, they've told us at this Congress, we die sudden death, a sudden glory. But if this church is going to come back, everyone must be serious. All this kind of political repentance and, you know, kind of things, boycott all that. And let us be sincere. Come back to the Lord. Let me read that part again for you to understand why I'm stressing it. If the backsliding king who sold himself to walk evil in the sight of God, who had been greatly stirred up by his wife, is to escape the judgment of God, he must humble himself and walk softly before the Lord, if the lukewarm church, 
that glory in material possession rather than in spiritual inheritance is to rediscover the joy of fellowship with Christ once again. There must be repentance and renewed zeal. Now, the restoration of the individual backsliders. How does that restoration begin? It begins by self-examination. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Second Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. If we are going to actually find the path of repentance and restoration, first, we must examine ourselves, and we must know where we have gone astray. Without that self-examination, we will not be able to find the way back unto the Lord. Not only that, when you examine yourself, you will have to be very, very sincere. Because if you think that you are more than who you are, you will not be able to actually retrace your steps. In Romans chapter 12, verse 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. That is, if we're going to come back, there must be real self-examination. And you don't think that you are sanctified when you are not even saved. You don't think that you are spirit-filled when you are so carnal. You do not think that you are all right when God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, angels and men, the Bible and your conscience, and the people who are living around you, when they are all against you and they know that your life is not right, you do not think that you are who you are not. If you are going to have real restoration in Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. And so then, repentance begins with self-examination, and accepting your fault, accepting that you have gone astray. Normally, the backslider is filled with his own ways. But as long as he thinks of himself more highly than he ought to think, there will be no true repentance, and there can never be restoration. Not only that, if we're really going to repent, and the church is going to come back to where the church had been, there's something we should take care of in ministry. Second Corinthians chapter 6. From verse 14, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. We've read this before and we've read it concerning marriage. That is true, absolutely true. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers in marriage. But there's another part to it. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers in ministry. If the church is going to be fully restored, and the church is going to be permanently restored, remain in that renewed state, then we must not be allowing unbelievers to come into the pulpit to minister. 
Be not unequally yoked together. You cannot yoke together in ministry with unbelievers. You cannot bring backsliders to come and be ministering or be working. Because if you do, you will not have the blessing of the Lord. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion has light with darkness? Now you don't bribe people with the with ministration. If you know somebody is not living right, and you are having a hard time with him, and you know his life is rotten, his life is bad, you don't bribe him with ministration. You don't say, maybe if I give him opportunity to be zona leader, coordinator, maybe that uh, privilege and that position will make him grateful and the trouble he has been making, he will not make trouble again. If he's a backslider, keep him out of the pulpit. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And what conquered us, Christ or Belial? You know, there are people that openly and outwardly they appear that to, they say they are Christians, but then they are occultic behind the curtain. They're looking for power. And because they're looking for power, even though they are coming to church and they are hearing of salvation, sanctification, and Holy Ghost baptism, they're looking for power from the devil. They're getting into magic. They're getting into stargazing. They're getting into other things that are cultic. And if you know it, you don't get them involved. What part has he that believeth with an infidel? You find somebody in deeper life who is always questioning and he says, this trinity, uh, I don't understand God is a, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Pick him up to start with and remove him from the ministry and then privately you can be talking to him and straighten him out on the doctrines of the Bible. And uh, you, you have a zonal leader that is always saying, uh, well, this, uh, I know we've been talking about one man, one wife, but uh, since I've been hearing about it, I don't feel convenient about one man, one wife. To start with, before you answer him, before you straighten him out, remove him from being a zonal leader. It's an infidel. Doesn't believe the Bible. Doesn't stand on the word of God. This holiness that we're talking about, sanctification as a definite experience, that uh, I don't know how somebody can be totally free from inward sin. It's not read about Enoch, about Samuel, about Joseph, about Daniel, about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and about the New Testament, and the fact that my grace is sufficient for you. And that Jesus Christ, he has called the people unto himself that my purify a peculiar people zealous of good works and it says he doesn't believe in inward holiness and sanctification it's an infidel removing if the church is going to remain in this restored renewed position all those infidels cannot be allowed to continue ministering and preaching you find a fellow uh, a brother was uh, preaching yesterday uh, and, uh, you know, when I listen to some of these uh, preachers, I just praise the Lord for them. And, you know, the brother that talked on the eternal stage, uh, when I preached, you thought I was hard. And uh, that brother that preached on the eternal stage, uh, you know, uh, it's another story. I don't know. I think he has been going around. He's been seeing all these uh, all these uh, people talking and you know till 4 a.m in the morning men and women and uh, you know i i know the brother is like a phineas that you know he sees an israelite and a medianitish a woman he has a javelin in his hand and you know how he threw out the javelin yesterday and you know it's uh, that you know you're a zonal leader you are this and that and you're still talking with a woman standing there standing there in a congress, not just ordinary retreat, in a congress like this. I mean, when you listen to somebody like that, you, I, I need to be praying for such people. That the fire they have within them. That God will keep that fire. I prefer the message to be hard and have a lot of pepper rather than the message that makes people laugh. 
I prefer, you know, the house of mourning and weeping is better than the house of laughter and mirth. And you know, you need to hear such messages. And uh, maybe if you are choosing, if you want to buy cases, those are the cases to buy. The cases that will buy and listen to it and the javelin will be thrown at you. And the fire will be burning. You'll say, God, I will never touch sin. I will never be careless in my life. That's the case that you need to buy. But the, you know, the kind of psychedelic kind of preaching, watered down, diluted, mutilated, a lot of, you know, things in it. No fire, no power. But if you find infidels that are not able to preach the word, that, you know, when they come in there, they don't, they don't spark fire, and they don't have zeal, and there is no fervency. You know, don't put them on the pulpit. At this time, as we're going back, we need messages that are filled with fire. Am I right? That's how the church can remain. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. Distinguish yourself. You tell the people, I am different. I'm not a compromiser. Come out from among them. If this church is going to remain in the renewed, restored stage that the Lord has gotten us through, all this week, we must come out from the unequal yoke in ministry. And be ye separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So, we need to be restored. And as we, and as we get restored, we remain in that place of restoration. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. Anything that appears to be evil, anything, whatever, abstain from the appearance of evil. That's what you need to do as an individual. Point two, the restoration of backsliding churches. Restoration of backsliding churches. Let's look at Joel. Chapter 2. Reading from verse 12. Therefore also now, says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repented him of the evil who knoweth. If he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering on to the Lord your God, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify, set apart the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, 
Where is their God? If the backsliding church is going to be restored, the priests, the ministers of the Lord, will need to gather the people together. As you are here this week, you are representatives of the church members where you come from. When you go back, they will be expecting messages on healing, deliverance, faith, miracle, prosperity, children, and a lot of things. That's what they have been expecting, and that's what you have been giving them that has made the church to backslide. Do you see at this conference that we didn't give much space to gifts of spirit, signs, wonders, testimonies? God gave me a car. God gave me a wife. God gave me children. Good luck to you. Even the people in the world have cars and wives and children. Do you see that at this Congress, the emphasis has been holiness? We're coming back to where we were before. And do you see that after the message, the emphasis is on prayer? And we leave you to pray. We leave you to pray. That's what we've been doing at the headquarters church here now for some months. We tell them, they come in before the meeting, they'll be praying. That's what we do in our normal services in Lagos. And after the message, they keep on praying. And uh, all the other things, you know, pray for this, pray for this once in a while. Once in a while, when we see the need, we try to still bring the healing power of God to them. But our emphasis now is, Everybody to repent. At the children's church, you see, gather the children together. The bridegroom, the bride, gather all of them together. And let everybody understand, as we go back to the churches, the local churches, that the whole local church will need to come back to where we were before. Preach the word. And as we preach the word, preach it not with laughter, I enjoyed the message of last night, but the part I didn't enjoy in it is, you know, the, the laughter and everything. You see, sometimes uh, the brother preached last night, how she listen to me. When you preach and give illustrations, I use illustrations all the time too. And you use illustrations that are, you know, very captivating and that will send arrows into somebody's heart. But you say it with a laughing mood yourself. And the people will laugh. They forget the seriousness of what you are trying to say. You see, when, when I come before, when I come to the pulpit, I preach as if that could be my last message before I see my Lord. And when you see the condition of the church, the way the church is, and you are talking about suffering, about endurance, about evangelization. Oh, if I were to give those same illustrations, I'll make you cry before I finish. I don't even know whether I could give those illustrations without crying myself. You know, my heart is all liquid. And I, when, I, when I see things, and when I see that my Lord, they've taken away my Lord from that place, and I don't know where they have carried him, the Lord of holiness, the Lord of purity, the Lord of power, the Lord of love. When I see that in the church of the living God, they have taken my Lord, the Lord of holiness, out of that place, and I'm looking for him. I come to that local congregation, I'm looking for my Lord, and I say, where is our God, the Lord of holiness? Where have you taken him? I can't laugh when I'm saying that. You, you preachers, cut down the laughter. Cut down the laughter. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. You see much laughter? Look at Paul the Apostle. You talk about Paul the Apostle who is stoned and beaten. You see laughter? Let's, let's be dead serious about this thing. We're trying to snatch people out of hellfire. 
when you go back to the locations where you came from. And the church needs to come back to the real center of the teaching of holiness. It says, let the priest and the ministers and the women and the children and the bride and the bridegroom, let them come together, let them tear their hearts and let them weep. Let them fast, let them pray that the Lord will restore the heritage of his people. And so, as you are leaving this morning, I thank God that brought you. And this has been a landmark in the church in deeper life. As we are going back, please remember everything that you have heard. In Acts chapter 20, Verse 17. And from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and he called the elders of the church. And you elders of the church, we have unpicked you from the various locations and localities. I have brought you in here to remind you of the desires and the purpose of the head of the church Christ. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons. You know, brethren, how I have been with you from the first day your feet stepped into deeper life auditorium. You know what I've always preached? You know my manner of life. Everything is clear and plain to you. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears, not laughter, and temptations which befell me by the line in which of the Jews and how I kept nothing that was profitable unto you back. Since you came, even this one week, you have seen how we have not kept anything back from you. Those that sin, I rebuke publicly. And those that need encouragement, I encourage them publicly and privately. You have seen it. How I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God. And faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. Not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city. Saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. So that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord. Of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now... Behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Now you don't know the last congress you are going to attend. This might be the last one for you. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. I have opened my mind at this congress. I have told you the word of God. I have revealed unto you, thus says the Lord. Now, I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take it 
therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch, and remember that by the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up And give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these sons have ministered unto my necessities and to them that are with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let's rise up and pray. Commit your life completely unto the Lord. We have taught you the truth. Stay by the truth. We have given you the totality of the word. Stay by it. Stand by it. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Don't fear man or woman. Reject the influence of backsliding women upon the ministry upon the local church and upon yourself as pastor and teacher of the word of God keep to the word of God everywhere you go keep to the word of God everywhere you go straighten out what is wrong Bring the whole church back. Bring the whole church back in repentance and prayers and fasting. Let the whole church repent. Bring back the teaching on salvation. I'm so excited today because God has been so faithful to me. I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Howard University. The first year was in easy, but I got a grant that
I paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. I just thank God, third year, the same thing. And I thank God because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to stay out of the I just thank God for all his provisions. I just blessed him with great.